Hello. Welcome to RPG Story Time. Woo! With Avita and Jason. Hooray! We're here. Yep. Hopefully, y'all can hear us well. I hope so too. The uh, the uh, the sound man does the sound thing. He's unlike me. I don't do the sound thing. Well, uh, where did we leave off last time? Alrighty, last time, um, we are still in the, um, the dragon quest, the Tyrolon's quest, the, the, the dragon of time, mm -hmm. um, and last time we met two dragons, uh, we met the dragon of dreams, Ilvania, and we met the dragon of ice, is that what she's called? Um, yes. I believe that is the case. <laughs> it's like you're, yeah. It's like you're in the palm of my hand. <laughs> this, and Celia, and with the help of the professor, and really good roles on diplomacy, or bluff, more, talked her ad down, and me giving up an artifact that my dragon had given to me, uh, talked her down, she gave it, and said we were going to start a religion to her, she gave us a scale, but right before we teleported out, um, the professor's cohort tech stole a bunch of stuff, and she heard that and got mad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now this is when you guys went and did the Watcher stuff, right? Hmm? It wasn't previous. We got that. We got that out of order. It was after. Right. No. Yeah. We said <coughs> that at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We said okay, that cool. at the end. Yeah. Uh, we talked about that at the end of great, last great. stream about the meeting, me meeting the Watcher and yep. then her wanting to go and help with the the Elven, Elven Crown, Crown quest. Return of the Elven Crown. Which um, we'll talk about that at a that later point. Good. That was a fun like side sort of story that we played out with. Everybody was technically playing an NPC, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, everyone was playing an NPC. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah. So, this is the next dragon that we were going to head to. Uh, this is another one that the professor, the professor had given us information on. And um, this was... I forgot the name. Mordugal. Uh, what type of dragon? Brown? Red? Yeah, like a cross between a brown dragon and a red dragon. Mm -hmm. He's a dragon of what? Fury. Of just that, the dragon of fury? Yes. So, the next dragon that we had to go find and try and get either information from or a scale from was the dragon of fury. However, the information that the professor had found for us told us that this dragon is asleep in a volcanic crater in Surtur, which it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is what you see on the map here. Mm -hmm. Where on the map? Basically where you see the beast lands. In, somewhere in the beast lands, mm -hmm. kind of there in the middle, there's a volcanic crater with a enormous dragon sleeping inside it. Now, that's not the only thing that we had to deal with. We also have to deal with these, an orc clan that have red markings on their face and armor that they watch over the this of over Mordegal, um, and they offer him tributes and treat him with a fearful kind of respect, you know, even while he's sleeping. So we had to get past them as well. Without raising the alarm of the orc, but like basically, yeah, this was this was the stealth mission for sure. Yes, as much as others maybe should have been, this one had oh, to be, <laughs> had to be. Because a, they have to get past the orc that guard him, this around the outside, revere him, mm -hmm. kind of worship him, yeah, really. a little bit both, a little bit, as well as not wake him up when they get there to do this. He's been sleeping a while, and like. 
for a reason. Yeah. Because that creature being awake is destruction to everything mm-hmm. in its wake, er, in its path. Not in its wake. So, besides Russia, obviously, we had Anton with us. Uh, Ragnar, who had begrudgingly agreed to give up the tooth after Jenya fed uh, the tooth from Sugura, after Jenya fed the scale and flesh chunk to Celia for no reason. That was a really dumb thing to do, in Rasha's opinion. Like, as the player, I'm sitting there like, what are you doing? That's stupid. He had reasons. Yeah, but they were dumb. No. They were not logical. They were not they were logical. They were not understanding what the, this dragon, this intense dragon which he wanted. They were not understanding that at all. I'm just like, ooh. Anyways. Um, and we have, of course, the professor and Tack his cohort, who has now, he has one horn that's like a kind of broken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the professor's cohort is a tiefling. Tiefling, tiefling. Um, and he's bejeweled his horn with some of the gems that he stole from Celia's hoard. Mm-hmm. This is just funny. <laughs> uh, anyways, so we have the professor in tech. We have Alexander, which means we also have his dragon, Z. Um, and then we have Jenya. So, I believe the professor had a good enough of a description of the area for us to teleport to an area kind of like right outside where they were. Yes, yeah. Kind of outside of the, I wouldn't call, it's more like a camp. Yeah, it's like a camp. Less, less a settlement. It's more just a camp of orc that stay here all the time. But it's kind, kind of, of still like a permanent camp. Right. But it's still more camp. Right. Like. <laughs> So there are different there are different functions of orc here, right? They're not all just warriors. And uh, the unfortunate truth of the matter is that the party didn't really have ways or have enough ways to totally understand all of that. And so they went in kind of not totally blind. Like they knew positions, they knew um, they knew where they had to go, but they didn't really understand completely the culture they were going into and how to interact. But they did know that they couldn't just show up there like themselves. Of course. So they had to go disguised somehow. So, um, Tack is, has... Veil. Yes. So he can just look like... Whatever. So they, we watched, we saw the camp a little bit and saw what some of the markings look like. Even though we didn't necessarily know exactly what those meant. Um... So, Tack was able to do the veil thing and look like an orc. The professor is extraordinarily good at disguise and was able to look like an orc. And, of course, you know, he speaks all kinds of languages and and is the very, very good at talking one. Mm-hmm. I mean, Anton is as well. Mm-hmm. Were they the only two that disguised and the rest of us were sneaking? Or mm-hmm. some? Uh, I think Anton probably was invisible, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm, well... I if, was sneaky. If he wasn't speaking... I don't... Was it just He had a way to disguise himself. He had did magic he? to disguise himself. Did through. he disguise himself? I don't know if he... I don't remember. I honestly don't remember I if he don't did. remember. But he could have. Uh, Anyways. Although he couldn't lie, so he probably did sneak. He probably was sneaky or invisible. Um, Ragnar was probably... Sneaking. Surprisingly sneaky for a barbarian. I mean, we are pretty barbarians high levels. Barbarians are sneaky. Are they? Oh, yeah. Okay, barbarians right. get uh, stealth or... Okay. I'd move silently. And being stealthy is my thing, so I was mm-hmm. obviously fine. <laughs> So what they were basically doing is they had to get through the different tiers and layers of this orc camp that they didn't fully understand. So the professor and Tack were sort of like the hey look at us team, we look like orc and we can we are at least good enough at bluffing and BSing to for you to believe that we're here and draw your attention from our friends who are gonna sneak by you. Mm-hmm. And like to kinda help guide when that's gonna happen. Yeah. So there were um you know, orcs carrying things into the mm-hmm. volcano, the crater. There were orcs just doing random things outside. Um, so we wanted to be ones that, they wanted to look like ones that went inside. Um, so we got into, in the inside of the volcano without a whole lot of trouble. There's a little yeah. bit of, there's a, maybe a tiny bit of interactions. 
But once we got in and then we figured out where we needed to head to actually get to the dragon was when um, there was some kind of chief mm -hmm. and he had two underlings with him. The Shach. Yes. Had two Azog with him. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and there are Ulk not far away. Yes. The chief also had some kind of symbol. It was wearing... Um, Oh, no, not the chief. The Azog wear some kind of symbol. Some kind of holy, holy symbol. symbol. And what they did, uh, I believe the professor and maybe a couple other people did the figure out that got the... it was a holy symbol of Shagras, which is um, like orc. Um, well, here. Some sort of orc god. That is the symbol that they were wearing. It is an orc god of death. Makes sense. Uh, and uh, Tirlan obviously was invisible. Invisible, and yeah, he can move like, pretty quietly. He so. can just fly. Oh, all right, he can fly. Invisible, fly. And fly. We're and good. Don't gotta worry about him. So they were, I guess, approached by this chief and the two Azog, and the professor was able to bluff his way into and I don't remember it. oh also another thing that's important to mention is that just like when we were with Celia we were all like telepathic yes telepathically yeah. connected telepathic bond had been cast as long as they're within 50 feet of each other they can communicate yeah. telepathically with that's each other very important for a stealth mission of this yes mm, yeah so the professor was able to talk his way into Paying his respects to the great dragon, right? But the chief's like, you have to be really quiet. You better, you know... You know, don't wake him. Don't wake him. But okay. You know, he, he was able to play up, I guess, his sort of like... Like like he was a fawning follower type right. thing. Fawning right. follower for an orc, right? <laughs> and I believe he's going to send an escort with him also. No, the the chief went in with his... Yeah, that's, what, two, that's what I mean. Yeah, he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll take you in there. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So we get in there, and you know they're they're very silent. They're kind of watching. Who is it in our party that makes the check to spot the weakness on the dragon where we can get a scale? My guess is Jinya. That that makes sense. Oh, he probably did his thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Jinya did his communing with the universe thing, mm -hmm. I believe, and spotted a place on the dragon where we would be able to get a scale as opposed to I think another option would have been trying to somehow mentally connect like Tirlan mentally connecting to Morgigal and have it being given in okay. some strange way there there were right. many different ways they could have achieved this but the point of it was to not wake Morgigal and still achieve the objective so they chose this path mm -hmm. yep um, because you know Virginia did his thing and, and saw that. So they saw saw kind of like how a path they would either flying over there or something like that. However, there were still the three orc in there. So what we did as a party was communicate well enough that we um, we timed a very uh, abrupt attack on the three of them. And we actually were able to very quickly and silently take out all three of them. Uh, and it was dicey for a minute because one was, when they realized what was going on, one was making a beeline and like... Trying to get out. Still being quiet. This is... Yeah, because they the orc still... also don't want to wake the dragon. Right. <laughs> they're scared of it. Even as much as they kind of revere, revere it, it, they're scared. They're right. scared of him. Of Morgigal. The dragon of fury, you know. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Respect and fear are very much the same thing in orc society, if as much a society as it actually is. Yeah, but you know, we've got Ragnar, who is this really super strong barbarian. You've got Rasha, who's good with her tools. Sabres. Sabres, that's right. <laughs> and you got Anton, who can turn into a dragon. Orc just casts spells. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there's enough people here. Jenya, 
his pack. Yeah, I mean, enough people. Right. Three. Not as powerful as you, Orc. We're pretty easy to take out. The difficulty was doing it before they raised the alarm or yeah. did anything, and, and they did. We did. So at that point, it was it was actually this is actually one of the easier missions for you guys. Like, I mean, of the it didn't ones seem where, like it. Of the ones where it was more than just talking to a friendly yeah. dragon, this was a dangerous surprisingly one. Surprisingly, somewhat. It went it went simply. It went relatively well. Well, you guys kind of at this point, like you guys sort of figured out your rhythm and like how to really do it together. It's like, ah, oh, right? we got this yeah. now. You know, we know how to work as a unit, and boom, boom, boom. We get the stuff done, we get the heck out. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Um, prob Genya probably was the one, because didn't he fly? Didn't he fly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that went and actually got the scale. And then, like I said, that part was very, was relatively simple. Like, once we got out of there, once we got the scale, we could just teleport out. Mm-hmm. And Nobody was the wiser, and at some point later, other orc come in and see three dead orc and go, "What? What happened?" <laughs> I like I like to imagine that that they just turn into something uh, 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 as related to the dragon, like probably the the dragon's fury is is can even touch you even when he sleeps, right? Type of thing. <laughs> you know, like, is he still alive? Yeah. Is it uh -huh. thousand years later? You guys didn't wake him up, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's still there sleeping. He's been sleeping a long time. He's a sleepy dragon. Yes, yeah, Did he got put... Who put him into slumber? Yeah, well, that's a story for another oh, time. That, that could that could come up in the new... in the new. Uh, Our next campaign is so. set in this same world of, that we're about to start a thousand years after the end, which in, we haven't got, gotten to the end yet of, but... That'll, that could be something you guys discover and have oh, to deal okay. with. All right, then. Uh, All right. Um, yeah, so, that, I mean, that one was really, like, I was ready for, like, a full-blown, this is going to go sideways. Uh, and it went, like, it was like a bunch of professional Shadowrunners got together and did, like, a raid on a dragon sword. I was like... We made good choices, and... Great, this one's done. You guys are done. And cool. we made good choices <laughs> and, and and good rolls. Had good rolls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, so. So at this point. And some time passes between. Not, not that much time, actually, is it? Isn't this maybe. Because that happened on the. No, literally just, no yeah, time passes. It's just like the next day. It's like day. the next day after I don't they know do where this. we were starting from, but. Um, you probably went back to Milovich. I mean, probably went back generally to Milovich. Generally, how that makes went. Sense. Makes sense. Um, of the, all the firstborn dragons that are still alive, because one of them is no more, at this point, we had talked to or been in some contact with all of them except for one. And the last one, the one that was argu arguably easily the most dangerous, is Lauthwir. Or Lout. He is the dragon of shadow. The dragon of shadow. And unlike a lot of the dragons, he is, at least from what I've seen, he is much more active in the world. He uh, rules Catalima City, as you can see here on the map. This is... What, what country is this? Catalima. Catalima, so... You can scroll out more, it still keeps going. There you go, that was more like it. Cat Catalima is big. And Catalima, C Catalima City, pardon me, is... In the center of, of the nation is this ancient ruined city. Uh, and there's a story behind that, and I won't go into it because this is also something they could discover. But that's where he rules from. And there are... There is this horrible cyst there, and a pit with his uh, other dragon minions and their dragon riders and knights and it's kind of cursed it is definitely in ruins though it's, and again this is a picture that I've chosen it's not my art uh, it's, you not, you know, it's just something I found is like that represents this well uh, it's an obviously ancient ruined city open to the moonlight you know there aren't really any structures that are completed 
and they don't seem to care there because they're just ridiculously powerful and don't have to. Yeah. So Laufir, or Laut is what I call him most of the time because that's what people refer to him as the most often. Um was the last one and the most dangerous for honestly all of us um he's also been built up to be one of the main villains in the entirety of the story and he's he's a major antagonist yes it's not like there's one no right but he is a major major antagonist um he was at the slave auction that rasha and friends rescued um uh, Treskin and Ragnar and Pell you. from. Treskin and Ragnar and Pell from. Brain fart there. Uh, you know, he was there. Rasha still hasn't really heard that much about him because no one... She hasn't really super asked, but no one has really He's been very forthcoming Tyrlon about it. and Cyril and House Milovich for a long time in the background. Uh, he's the reason why Cyril was kicked out of the Dragon Isles to begin with. Uh, his followers... Previous to this, many years ago, before Rasha's time, when they came around in the story, like ten years before, his followers were attempting to bring him back from the abyss, and they were killing off as many of his brothers and sisters as they could, so he would be unchallenged when he returns and could be the most powerful, blah, 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 all this stuff, right? Like, things an, an evil organization does for their evil overlord when they're trapped in another realm and can't get out. Well, he came back. Yeah. And had been active since. He's a master of the Tenth Circle of Magic in the Wizard's Guild, so he's a powerful, powerful, powerful being. And this nation is his horde. It's not just the gold and stuff. Like, these people, whether he may like some of them or not, he's like, this is mine, and no one else can have it. And I don't, But I don't care about the other places, and we'll play ball in, in these ways. But this is mine. And you try to take what's mine, that's really bad for you. If you just leave me alone, I'm probably not going to care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, he was the last one we had to talk to. Rasha had not been looking forward to it. No Simply, one had. Even from the vaguest bits of information that she had received, she was like, this is, sounds like the absolute worst idea to try and talk to this guy at all. There had been a whole conversation at one point where people were talking with Gravin about a safe way to meet him, and Gravin just laughing and repeating over and over, there is no safe way to talk to Lau. No. And Rosh is over here like... <laughs> you, you do that... Anyone who ever has done that has always taken the risk. Because mm-hmm. he's a supremely powerful ancient dragon wizard. Yeah. Yeah. So, the professor has this final piece of information, which is how to teleport into Catalina City to a location not shielded by Loud's magic. He obviously warns that it is extremely dangerous due to the amount of dragons and riders that make their home there, but is the only way close to Laut that the professor has been able to discover. He thinks that this is an extremely dangerous play, but is also is convinced there is no other way close to Laut. So, also kind of as a setup for telling the story of this, I personally, as a person, was having an extraordinarily bad night when we roleplayed this, so I was kind of distant and didn't really do anything because I was not in a good headspace and just related. <laughs> yeah, I was. The things that were happening in the game were like com- combining with the things that were happening in my head, so I kind of sat in the chair with like a comforter wrapped around me. And just listen to everyone else talk about what was happening. Um, just as a preface. Because <laughs> um. there was there was a whole lot leading up to this. And um, the one thing that the party, some of the party did know, 
is that Laufweir was also, like I said, he had an organization that we had followers and whatnot and mm -hmm. people in the Wizards Guild and people in other countries and all these things that were like, oh, this ancient powerful thing, yeah, we needed to come back because all this other ancient powerful crazy stuff is also coming back and he can deal with it and we can't, right? Now, as misguided as that might be, you know, it's also not untrue from their perspective. And that's what this game is all about, is perspective of different characters and different people in the world and, like, how those work with and against each other and, you know, the, what comes out of that is whatever the PCs do and make it into. And uh, in this particular moment, uh, Laufweer has an organization called The Web, which is a ring of spies throughout most of the planet. And, uh, and he knows it's a planet many people don't. Yeah, level of technology in the general parts of the world and everything. So that'll come into play in a minute. That's all I'll say. Well, we're about to get there, so. Yeah. So when you guys arrive, it's nighttime in the ancient underground catacombs of Catalima, or the Catalima City. And as they're walking around, they basically get to the right spot. The, the professor has stated they're at the exact right spot, which is very near this place, um, it's called, it's a, like this terrible cyst in the ground and a sinkhole of just oppressive uh, emotions of hatred, lust, and despair down where they teleported into. And they all have to overcome... The evil hole of evil. Yes. <laughs> and the characters have to steal themselves and not be drained or influenced by it. And they do. They because still feel they're, those emotions. Though. Right. You still feel them, but Which, you're not, it, it doesn't affect you as negatively as it, sh as it can to other people. Which, that's also part of why me being in the headspace I was and being, like, out of things and not interacting is also, like, kind of in character, too, just being affected by the whole area. Uh, you know, the fact that, like, I didn't talk, like, at all and was just hardly registering things that were happening could have basically been in character as well, mm -hmm. just because of the horrible situation that they were in. And I believe that you guys came up with an idea to show up as like a diplomatic sort of envoy in a way. I think Ragnar Right, because they're saying that, some of them were at representatives of different countries and, they were. and things like that. They were actually... It, it was not a bad plan. And and it was not a bad plan. Uh, there are just things they also didn't know that was going on until right about now. So as they steal themselves and get past this terrible... This horrific place. This mm -hmm. place of pure evil. We get up to the surface. Where is Laut's throne? Um, as they're walking up the stairs out of the ground, which as you can see through the picture, it's they basically walk up these stairs to open fields of ruined places. And they realize something isn't quite right. Dragons circle overhead, and uh, the ruined throne is exposed to the elements over centuries with the moon high above, casting many shadows. On all sides, they are surrounded by more dragons seated in a procession leading to the elevated throne where sits a man in black robes, his face hidden by shadow. Laut is fully flaunting his power to the party. And Argoth didn't come along, so that Did part didn't happen. No, he wasn't How with you guys. No. Um, yes. Yeah. Because at this point, do you we guys, even start talking? Yeah, you guys they introduce yourselves. Talking, and you know, like, we're here for blah, blah, this. blah. And Lao just... Did you think I was unaware of your little game? You cannot keep secrets from me. Tell me, what have our brothers and sisters been up to? Uh, and he, he just says that right to tear long. And he knows. Yeah. Yeah. Of course he does. And so, as you were a little checked out, yeah. and, and that's okay, essentially what happens is they talk back and forth, and Laut plays his chess master role, as he really is. Uh, and he beautifully and horribly at the same time. This, again, was another one of those, like... Uh, It was tough because I want people to have a good time. At the same time, when you take on an evil chess master villain, it's not always fun. And 
he played each of them like a fiddle, and they all kind of got worked against each other, and it, and it came out that um, the professor was has been a spy. Oh, you know how um, you what? skip some things. What? Like Lout killed Tack. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Right. Like Tack gets up and he right. just kills Tack. You skip with a spell. Lots of things that are sorry, important. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lout kills Tack. Because Tack was being mouthy. Mm -hmm. and it's tack's because mouthy. that's Tack's mouthy. Um, Lout is demanding that they hand over Tyrlon because um, he wants to use his brother's spirit to gain godhood and the time domain because he blames. No, not that. He didn't tell them that he mm -hmm. blames Tyrlon for many things from the past. Mm -hmm. And some of the characters already know that based upon this whole journey, which is part of the reason why Jenny did what he did with. Uh, with uh, Saluda's fleshy bits uh, to Celia. Yeah. Um, Chirilon agrees that his past actions caused some of his brother's current woes, like he's learned some things. Um, Chirilon reveals he wishes to end the Treaty of Fire and bring order to the Dragon Isles, as well as fight against the Illithid. Um, Lot would agree to end the treaty if they can gather their other siblings in Iona to do so. And, of course, he's already doing all he can to secure against the Illithid. But he's not going to aid in a civil war. Um, Be because, because yeah. yeah, the creature that's there right now, who is leading the Dragon Isles, is a, a, a dragon called Kraga, which they had fought in the past, who'd been brought back to the Lich because Laut showed her the way to become a Dracolich before they faced her, and so she has returned as a Dracolich. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to help in the Dragon Isles because he's already controlling the Dragon Isles. Tyrlon obviously would not agree to stay for a lot to use. So. So after killing Tack, um, like I said, Lout revealed that he had been, you know, give, feeding the professor in the information without his knowledge. He knew everything that we've been doing. And he was the reason that we found the, the other, other dragons. dragons. Or, or the ones that the professor you know, gave, gave the, the yeah. information for, right? Um, and, you know, he he throws people against each other. We talked about it. And then he offers for them to leave. He offered for us to leave with our lives if we could give a god-blooded instead of Tyrlon. Jenya, who is, what, neutral? Lawful neutral. Yeah. And... Uh, did his communion with the universe thing and discovered the professor was god-blooded and offered him up. Now, at this point in time, they don't know that the professor is willingly look working for Lothlir. So... Which, that's a spoiler. Well, still. Because we hadn't said that yet. I, I know, but... Yeah. It's, it's, it becomes good because then... Yeah. So, Jenya is like, we're going to take the professor. Ragnar, who, up till this point, chaotic good character sees no other way out and reluctantly goes along with it. Which, that's a very important thing for his character because that is not a good act. Not at all. Not at all. And it changed him. Yeah. That changed him permanently. He was now chaotic neutral. Mm -hmm. However, it also made sense with his storyline as he now had this closer connection with the dragon. Um, of rage. Uh, Jormungand. Jormungand. Uh, who is like chaotic neutral. So, like, it, it worked out. And permanently raging, which Ragnar is all the time as well. Yeah. Um, Alexander, who is also, like, maybe neutral or something. He's neutral, so... Told his friend, told Ragnar to leave so that he didn't have to make that choice and that he would, you know, take the stain on his character for the rest of them. Which didn't, you know, too late. Yeah, too late. Tyrlon, at that point, knew that he had been defeated. Oh, no, I sorry. No, shh. This is what I read earlier, that, that you wrote this wrong. This is the professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the professor, and he saw that those who we had helped, that would just so easily offer him up. Um, he in walk, he says, oh, okay, that's how it is. So he walks up to Lout's side. Revealing that he had been working for him all along. Oh, no. No. 
yet. Mm -hmm. That's not exactly how it went. It wasn't a ruse that it was new information. They didn't do that. He revealed that he'd been working for, with him all along. Yeah. That's not quite fair. That's fine. But anyways, um, good guy Lout giving you guys an out. <laughs> uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. He did. Good guy Lout. Hey. He did it so it would tear them apart. Yep. He did it on purpose. Yeah. Um, for a reason. So yeah. And saying that, the party knew that they were totally screwed. Allow gleefully t told them about how he had been manipulating all of them, including the professor, even though the professor was willingly working with him to get the champions of his brothers and sisters here to highlight all of Tyrlon's failures so that they would then return to their dragons and reveal Lout's power, wisdom, and intelligence. He sealed Tyrlon's defeat. Also, it was revealed that the professor is Lout's champion. Yes. At this time, is like, well, my champion. What shall we do? And that's when the party really knew that, oh, we they were totally... don't have a leg to stand on yeah. here. This is a chess master who just checkmated us. Mm -hmm. Which, again, is a, is a strange place to be mm -hmm. as a player because, you know, um, that's not always fun. At the same time, the world isn't always about we win. It's about... We're in a tough situation. How do, how do we survive it? How do we, yeah, how do what we, do we even learn survive? from it? What do we come away from it? Yeah. And. Yeah. But yeah. Um, he also. Lau also revealed that Kraga worked for him. Because they were asking. Alexander. When he, they brought up the word Kraga, right? Alexander used to be enslaved to Kraga. Uh, and long ago had to steal Cyril's children. From him to take to Kraga because she was trying to manipulate. This is when she was still alive, trying to manipulate um, Milovich family, right? Anton is there; he's a Milovich. So it's all these, all these ancient grudges, these old, these old sore wounds. He's just digging into each single, every character, Louds? and watching yeah. them fall apart. He's in front that of kind him. of guy. But yeah, yeah, and Lau obviously was shown to be the puppet master behind the scenes of many things that were happening. Um, and he said he would end the Treaty of Fire. Now, because Jinya is the way he is, and can, he got Jinya to agree with his motivations and showed them, us, all why we were important, but also pawns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, like, no one was happy, No right? one was happy. Not, Not even the professor. Because Lao had also... Manipulated him. Manipulated him. When he thought, oh, but we're, I'm working with this guy, and Lao's like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm glad <laughs> you think that. Yeah. Uh... So Lauda played them all. And what's worse, mm -hmm. he was actually right. Uh, it didn't make him any less evil, mm -hmm. but he basically showed them all that all this floundering about and the things they were doing were, were really pointless because they weren't paying attention to the one thing they needed to. The only thing that will keep this world safe is unity against the thing above. And if you all worry about your stupid little squabbles then we're all dead. And if it was this easy for me to do this to you, then you don't stand a chance against the Elithid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so this is, yeah. He says, you know, who do, who do they think, who do we think is going to defeat the Elithid, Tyrlon or Laufu? Yeah, he says, we have to work together. we got to understand each other and succeed against beings that can manipulate your mind. And simulate your life. Uh -huh. And then, in the end, Tyrlon gave his scale to Anton to do what he thought best. So Lau agreed to let us all leave for an exchange of scales. Anton agreed to this. See, I up until doesn't even remember this. At, by this point in the night, I was very out of it. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Tyrlon gained a scale of Lau, but the cost of fellowship the group of you oh mm, okay you you guys were broken at that point in time not not even all of you were necessarily friends after this for a minute so yeah like i said i was i was very out of it and lout had a scale of tyrlon with which he could claim supremacy over the first flight which is the first one dragons the ones we've all been meeting 
at that point, we were ready to teleport out. And we're like, okay, let's go right now. Let's leave. Alexander. Foolishly decided to stay behind to find out more about Kraga. Because it struck a chord with him, right? Mm -hmm. And he was ready to just throw his life away to find out any way that he could get close to her to keep her done. And that is a point that Lout has manipulation over someone. So Alexander stays behind um, to discuss with Lout. Everyone else leaves and it's kind of like, well, poop. We got the scale, but that was definitely a defeat. Uh, none of that mattered to Alexander. He tried to pull out barrels of wine. The professor stayed behind for the discussion as well. So you have three not friends, because Alexander did just try to give the professor up to allow Fuir to sacrifice to become a god. Um, the professor's not happy with either of them, because he thought this being he was working with were, was more of a ally like-minded and realized that he was just as much of a pawn as the rest of them and the other guy he couldn't trust because he'd give him up to save his own skin and well you know Laufer is a champ the the chess master and he's not really that concerned with either of them even though Alexander is the champion of Zalaga he doesn't that doesn't matter to him no in fact uh, Lau pretty much denied him any information about her whatsoever and asked the Alexander what use he was and what reason he shouldn't just kill him now. Uh, when asked what he was good for, Alexander had no real answer. And Laut found Alexander only useful as a sword, like so many others I have here standing before me. So Laut then asked the professor to figure out Alexander's worth. And the professor defeated Alexander to give him a chest, presuming proving that he wasn't the tactician as he suggested. Um, and in that, he was made to serve Kraga again. And he goes, since you are, you only have service as a sword, you will serve Kraga once again. You will be her sword, her right hand, and her protector. And he magically gayosed him to do so. He also used magic to take away his connection to Babaga. That's very, uh, yeah. That's very intense. That's very, that's a big deal. Extraordinarily. Um, and then Alexander was... He stayed in Catalema... For a time. For a time, until some Verata, whoever that is... He's another wizard. Teleported him and Z, Zerodent, his dragon, to Iona, which is the city on the Dragon Isles, in front of... Tyr what used to be Tyrion's lair, which is now Kraga's. Now Kraga's. So at that point, Alexander released Zerodent from their bond and told him to flee, to run to Duadna and Talaron, and to tell him that Alexander can no longer be trusted. He was trying to, it is like his last dish effort to try to help his friends. Like, don't come after me. Yeah. I have. I will have to fight against you if you do. Be free and warn them. So Zerodent leaves, uh, and he walks into the keg where Kraga was waiting for him, and received him, and he was once again enslaved by this thing he hates. Now that makes for a really darn good story. Though it's not always fun to play through, that is some serious... Like it, yeah. If I were to, to me, I, I may be wrong, <laughs> right? To me, like, if I were to watch this in a movie or, like, read this in a book, I'd be like, oh, that's, oh, I can't wait to see how this character gets out of it. I can't wait to see what actually happens because that's terrible. How, what are they going to do now, you know? And that's where kind of, that one ended. And um, everyone sort of, the characters parted ways for a while and sort of went back to their own quarters to figure out exactly what they could do. Because it wasn't like Laufer was wrong about the things he said. Mm -hmm. It's like, you needed to know not just the good things you all could do, but really what you all were actually capable of. Oh! Thank you. Thank you, Atom... Atom X... 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 I think I know who you are, but I can't remember. For subscribing. Here's Rowan. 
boo. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and that's that really gave the the party pause. And at, and when you can do that for characters who are very high level, to give them story reasons to go. You know, we can't just walk in and smash down the gates and everything. We really got to think about some things and figure out good plans. And the great thing was it came right after they worked cohesively as a party and did something awesome mm -hmm. that wasn't just smashing down the mm -hmm. gates. So it kind of hit that all home, too. It's like, well, okay, now we know that this guy's a lying, cheating, stealing jerk. But we know that, and we know how, how that we'll need people like that. We know that this person is a completely great, wonderful human being who'll do these, who can do these amazing things who won't do these terrible things. Well, we'll need that also. How can we utilize all of our various skills and talents that don't always match up together to defeat the Illithid? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm fairly certain at this point that since we were done with our quest, that pretty much after this, I just got asked to get sent back to Azidahaka. Yeah. Or Riyadh, one of the two. I think Riyadh first. I don't remember exactly. We'll, we'll look at it later and then correct the information at the beginning of the next episode. But Rasha went back to Azita Haka to you know, the dragon that she is the champion of. And she told him what happened. Um, she, you know, explained what happened. Explained the mindset that she was in at that point and how helpless and frozen she felt and everything like that and what had happened and, and Zita Haka's says he literally he's like he's like he's like oh no my child I'm I'm so sorry he's like this is this is troubling information but you know like I'm sorry that you had to deal with this had to go through this he's like rest and he like you know, he literally puts his giant, like, claw hand around her, kind of, like, gives her a hug, scoops her in close to him, and they rest together. Because mm -hmm. Izita Hawk is not a bad being at all. Yeah, he's, he's good. He's lawful good. And, and my point there, too, is to, like, show the difference in personalities between creatures and, like, okay, obviously it is not every dragon is like this or every every situation like this ends this way it's like no you can have good relations with it doesn't matter what the being is it matters what the it matters what the individual believes regardless of whether they're a dragon or a human or an elf or a it doesn't matter everything should actually be looked at as an individual and mm -hmm. not as all the orc are terrible maybe but maybe not maybe there are reasons Anything and everything does ev does does what they do, just like real life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, that's. But yeah. Uh, so we're gonna end end of the uh, today's our story time with uh, Rasha napping with an enormous. What's the name for the size category he is? A uh, great worm. Mm, like creature, the, no, like the gen generic name of creature type. Dragon? No, 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 like small, medium. Colossal? <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> colossal, a colossal being. Yeah, he, yeah, well, he's a very, very old dragon, so. Comforting you. Comforting me, and then we take a little nap. But that's, that's, that was actually, that was a really, like, wholesome and nice scene. We didn't play it out that night because it was super late, and I just mm -hmm. went to bed. I think we probably played it out the next day, maybe? Something like that. I think Anyways. that was the case. Yeah. But, um, that was good for also me, personally, as, like, a... Cleanse the This poor, palate. this poor, <laughs> this poor character. I mean, everyone had been through it, but, you know, obviously I don't know what everyone feels, so... I did. It, it wasn't, it, again, like, it was not necessarily fun, which is the unfortunate, which is not what I was trying to make it, um, but it was poignant in the story, and uh, the, the characters had to learn that lesson. Mm-hmm. 
or else they would not have succeeded against the lizard. And not every lesson you learn is fun in life. Sometimes they're hard. That's true. That is very true. But yeah. Anyway. Ah, this has been good. We should be back here next week again. Um, probably at 5.30, like normal. Unlike today, which was 4.30 Eastern. Because he's going to go do something. <laughs> But thanks for coming and hanging out. Hope you guys had a good time. It has been lovely as usual. Thanks again. At misc. Alright. Um, bye guys. Uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care.